Hey everybody, how's it going? Daryl here, welcome to the channel. Many of you have asked for a demonstration on how to program the popular Gigabar Move plus ILS. So Shove does have like that demo project where they have like the Gigabar Move, but the Gigabar Move ILS, the DMX profile has changed radically. So we're gonna add this to the defaults project step by step from scratch. And if you're not familiar with sound switch or you feel like you need some help with the basics and the fundamentals, I highly recommend you look at my other video where I have a 20 minute crash course just going over all the concepts you need to know in sound switch. And I highly recommend that you watch that first before watching this video. This will make some assumptions that you know a few of the basics, but don't worry, there will be some review. And the project that we produce at the end will be downloadable, completely free, and you can use it however you'd like. And I have a more complex project that I created as part of my sound switch shortcut where I have some of the more popular lights kind of synchronized with the Gigabar Move ILS and I'll have a link to that in the description below. It is available for purchase. And one last thing before we dive in, I want you to consider like why you are programming the Gigabar Move plus ILS. Because if you're wanting to get more out of it, I mean, there's only so much you can get out of a Gigabar, like a single all-in-one bar in one fixed location. You might want to consider like other lighting options. But if you're wanting your Gigabar Move plus ILS to match your other lights that you have as part of your rig, then I think this video is for you and I think this might be worth your while. So let me explain this setup. I have the Gigabar Move ILS with firmware version 2.10 with the US version, and that's the latest one at the time of making this video. I have another video showing you how to upgrade it to the latest firmware version. This version is great because it lets you have access to like the laser and like different patterns, so that's really cool. I have sound switch open right here. And this is a brand new project. Like this is boilerplate default stuff. So first things first, I just wanna double check to make sure that my hardware is connected. Okay, it sure is. Next, we need to add our lighting fixture. So we can do that with this plus right here, or we can go to the DMX map. I like doing it here, Chauve. And then gig bar move. So there's a lot of different versions. And so if it's green, it's production and released by the sound switch team. And this is public. So I didn't find a profile that kind of matched what I wanted to do because there's five unique groups of lights. You've got your movers, you've got your pars, you've got your strobes, you've got your laser and your derbies. And most of the profiles are pretty good, but none of them really had a way to control the strobes individually, which is one of the cool features you have over the move ILS over its predecessor, the normal move. So I wanted to be able to control those so I can control the chases on that. So I created this fixture, rather this top one. You notice it's the 51 channel mode. So this is the sound switch fixture manager. And this is where you can like add fixtures or even modify them and then upload them to the cloud. I think I've renamed it here, but I didn't push this change to the cloud. But I have in a whole other video kind of detailing that and SoundSwitch has pretty good documentation on their website on how you can create your own fixtures. Okay, I've added the fixture. That is basically the main first step. Just to show you my setup, here is my sound switch dongle connected to a Donner wireless DMX transmitter. And I have a wireless DMX receiver right here and it's plugged into the Hanty integrated outlet right here. And I have this on DMX channel one and 51 channel mode. And just these few steps already takes us to more than halfway done integrating this into sound switch. So click on this A, this A means auto loops. Select any one of these auto loops. And notice immediately how the gig bar starts to react when we're here. So like double click anywhere within this grid and click the space bar. And as you can see, it's like doing some stuff following this master track. Pretty cool. And so this is an edit mode. And so when we play this within sound switch, like connected to virtual DJ, Serato, or standalone mode, this is gonna be pulsating to the music. Let's do just one more auto loop to demonstrate this further. All right, pretty cool. But first thing we notice is that the movers like try to move, but they kind of just twitch there. So first things first, let's create some positions. And so within this menu, we can select each of these and we can adjust the movements for the for each of these movers. 
And so, yeah, thanks to my friend Jonathan Marriott for lending me this Gigbar Move ILS for this demo. One of the faults of like a gig bar like this, like an all-in-one bar, is that you're literally putting all of your eggs into one basket. So if something stops working, I mean, you're sorry out of luck unless you like, unless you ship it to a repair center and get it fixed. So this gig bar, this particular instance of the gig bar is broken in the sense that, but it does have one for the left mover. Both of the movers respond to the left mover sensor. So I'm gonna rename this one to disco ball cause I don't have a disco ball. So, well I do, but not for this demo. So I'm gonna call it straight ahead. And I'm gonna highlight both of these. So I click control, select both. I think it's like command if you have a Mac. So I'm gonna reposition it in this bottom right grid. So I want these movers really pointing towards the dance floor until they are facing straight ahead. And this is actually one of my favorite positions. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Okay, let's do stage left, stage right, dance floor center. That implies like center, but pointing down. Yeah, you can like have different positions and have like the left one and the right one kind of do different things. But I can't because they're doing the exact same. So you may not see it. So this is gonna be like an inverting of this guy. This crossover position is gonna be an inverting of this DJ booth one. Let me select both of them again. Let's do up. So these pointing up. And I click apply. So now I have all of these positions set and you can like see what positions are here on the master timeline. So let's choose another default auto loop, click spacebar. And now we can see our movers acting more like functional movers, facing the dance floor and they're doing things. And so you can set positions of your movers with these like little position cues. And so also on the master track and the individual tracks, you can apply a movement effects. And so that's how you can kind of have it do some offsets. So some of these are already applied throughout all these defaults auto loops. So we're not gonna do that here, but just know that they're there and they kind of work together with these positions. And these default movement effects don't work very well unless you have a position. So yeah, we have our pars moving, we have our movers moving, and we have our quinta working. So before we get into this and showing like how you can do some different chases, let's talk about attribute cues. So the gig bar move has various functionality that you can control via attribute cues. So it says global one, two, and three. So let's change the global for different things. And of course you can add your own later on. I have my two movers pointing at the wall right here. So let's see, global one. I'm gonna have the gobo just be like the open default one. And so let's do gobo two. So you can look at the manual to see like which DMX address corresponds with which gobo. 10 corresponds with this. So of course my left mover is broken, but I'm still gonna apply this here. I meant my right mover follows my left mover. And then we'll just change this. It doesn't matter what, we're just demonstrating this and how we can get set up. Okay, so we have three gobos and of course you can create your own. You can even create like folders so that you can keep organized. Now let's look at our other functionality. So another key piece of functionality is like your rotation for your derbies. So you can kind of see the derby right there. You see like the speckles of like red and blue and it's just kind of sitting there. Well, we can actually make it rotate, so. Probably just need like two, one slow, one fast. So I'm gonna uh, make sure that they are the same. There we go, so this will be slow. I'm gonna rename this one too. Really good to name your things well. Let's make a fast one. Suppose we could do a medium one too, but we're just blitzing through this. Let's rename it to fast derby. And so these attribute cues are kind of spread across these default auto loops already in the master track. And they look like these little flags. So every time like the timeline passes through here, it'll do this change, so like gobo change three. Modify these auto loops too by just putting these attribute cues wherever you want them. So for this one, I might want like slow derby. Yeah, I don't have any haze, so it might be hard to see on the camera, but it's rotating. And then later on, I might want like fast derby. And the last thing I want to do custom cues for is the laser. So we have these laser controls. So this controls whether it's on or off and it controls the color. So there's like a multicolor. Can I even see that in my camera? So this is documented really well in the manual as well. So this is like a multicolor, red, green, yellow, teal, purple. So we can have a different attribute cue for each color. 
Let's just do purple right now because that would look good with the particular auto loop that we are on. Let's just do dark blue because that would look good with blue pulse, this theme. Probably look good with other auto loops as well. So we could do a separate attribute queue to control just the pattern, but that might create a lot of different attribute queues. So I'm just gonna combine them. You have all these different patterns. So we'll just do this one. Click apply. We'll call this blue laser. Let's put it in here so the laser is on. Let's do laser off. So we can do like a chase, like on and off. Let's just do zero, zero. There we go, it's off. And let's do one more. Let's do red. And of course you can just add all of the ones you want as well. We'll choose a different pattern as well as having the laser be red. There we go, it's red. We'll just do this pattern, whatever this is. We'll put the red laser right here on this auto loop. And there we go, there's our laser. So we basically have all the groups of lights except the strobes. It's actually kind of loud. <laughs> so this is the master track. So when we add new lights, it'll automatically follow the intensity and the color of the master track. Multi bars are considered groups. So this is like the group header. So I can apply stuff here and it will apply to all the lights within the group. There's considered to be 10 lights underneath here and they're labeled pretty nicely. So there's like mover left, derby left, par left, par right, derby right, mover right. And then I have these four strobes here. Let's so apply a color. It needs to be white, not RGB white, but this white slider. And notice that is quite bright. You might want that. So I can do like a smooth pulse. So while these four tracks are highlighted, I'll drag and drop this and I can change the pulse effect. Let's say to, I don't know, 40% so we're not blinding people and this is on the half so let's just have it match because why not and there we go there's our strobes following everything around pretty neat our laser is on let's do one more I just want to show you one thing so you don't have to do this much manual control I'm going to show you something in just a moment but yeah, let's do a forward chase and let's have the intensity again be like maybe 30. And so this is happening on every beat on the quarter note. So let's just keep it with that energy. And we have to change the color to white slider. Then here we go. We have a chase. And what's great is you're like, yeah, that's not really adding much energy. Let's do it 16th notes. But I like the intensity. You can just easily change that. 36. I don't care. Yeah, I think that's too much energy. So let's do reverse chase, let's do eighth notes, see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that is appropriate. It's not too slow, but it's also not too fast and not too bright. It might be too bright on the camera that's shining directly on this. Okay, pretty cool. Well, we basically have our gig bar completely set up. We have all the things that we need. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to make your chases more interesting manually and then I'm going to show you how to auto script your auto loops. It's probably what you're going to want to do. But we have different groups of lights. So we're going to have our different groups of lights do different things. So this probably deserves its own video, but just know that this is here. Just know that we have this thing called like the color wheel. So that just shows like what different colors like look good together in relation to each other. So if we have green, then we know that we can have like blue and yellow would look good with it or blue and purple. That's like a color scheme. Or I can do green and red, which is just Christmas colors, so we're not gonna do that. But yeah, let's do green, blue, and purple. So let's have our movers be purple. So I'm gonna select this mover track. I'm gonna have it be purple, but not this white. Let's have this mover also be purple. And then we said blue, so I'm gonna highlight these two center pars. Remember it says par left, par right. Let's have these be blue. And let's just have everything else be green. And the laser is not green, so let's make a laser, green laser attribute queue. There we go, that's green. And let's choose a random pattern. Let's rename it, of course, green laser. I'm gonna drop this here. I'm gonna have it be off every other bar. So let's just alternate. It's not perfectly centered, so you can adjust that if you want. I'm not gonna. And then apply the green laser so it's off and on, off and on. It's like a little chase. And then here we go, let's try it out. You know, I might not like that position. So let me do straight ahead. 
So when it's doing this movement effect, like this circular movement effect, it'll be kind of like centered. There we go. I like that better. So let's just go back here, take a look at this. And we don't need the white strobes on for every auto loop. So we're just gonna be content with it being off. And then I could apply another color scheme here. In fact, let's do it. So let's stick with this blue, purple, green color scheme. Instead of just having this be red, let's just alternate these colors a bit. The blue laser on. So let's start it here and then see that transition. You know what might be cool is like right here on the drop when we enter this loop and right when we do this like major change in color, having the strobes on. So I'm gonna click like seven on my keyboard and it brings up this beat length. So let's do a half and then let's have these be white. Here we go. And control C so we can copy this to over here. And yeah, let's start over and see how that looks. Boom. And then right here, boom. Kind of cool. Okay, we're gonna leave it at here. So you don't have to manually control these, but this is just a tip, something you can do. Here is another auto loop. So there's this button right here named auto. This is like auto scripting songs, but you can auto script your auto loops as well. And you can choose a style. So you can choose the custom colors. You can, you can choose these various parameters. So you can like try it yourself. You can also adjust like what positions and like what attribute cues you want. Let's have a blue laser. Let's have the gobo change. This will be our color scheme. Okay, apply. And then here we go. Let's see what kind of light show Samswitch made for us. All right, pretty cool. And so if we have other lights and we add them, then it will just feel more intentional. We're gonna rename this. So blue and green. And this is a magenta one. Let's go ahead and do a different auto loop. So we did dance auto loop one. Let's do dynamic auto loop six. And we can also randomize it. There we go. And let's see what this looks like. Yeah, those pars are kind of cool. The movements are kind of jittery because there's just not enough of these position tracks. So I can definitely just like add more in there and it will make the movements feel a little bit better. And we can also apply a movement effect by selecting the whole thing. And then apply a movement effect. Here we go apply. And then that kind of makes the movements look a little bit better. And just note that with this project, it is auto scripting ready. So you can just choose a song and you can just auto script it. And then it's ready to go. So the more effort you put into like your positions and your attribute cues, like the more lively your gig bar experience is gonna be. But yeah, this is basically it. So this project we created is pretty simple to recreate, but I will have it down below. And just know also with all these auto scripts, the auto script doesn't really know that these can only be white. So you might need to manually adjust that, which we showed how to do. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you have found this helpful. Again, I will have this project down below in the description, a link that you can just download. And you know, we didn't put too much effort into this, but it is up and running. We have some of the basic attribute cues. So you can just use this as a launching pad, a template, make your own creations, make your gig bar work for you. Again, the sound switch shortcut is available. So I have like various chases grouped with like various popular groups of lights, like the 360 pixel tubes. And they just kind of all work in tandem and look good together. At least that was the intent. So thank you so much for watching. That's it. See you in the next video.